Friday, December 2nd, 2022, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today we're going to look at uh, whether private equity could be the new black swan out there. Of course, <laughs> it's very difficult to say uh to forecast a black swan, and that's why they're called black swan, be, because uh, they're very rare. Before we go into that, though, I just saw this morning that uh, it looks like uh, the United States or President Biden is prepared to negotiate a, a, a peace uh, deal or an end to the war in the Ukraine. He's prepared to speak to President Putin. Well, I think the Russians have been prepared to speak for a long time. So this, in my opinion, is a sign of weakness uh, for the West. But it's positive for Europe, I would say, because uh, that war uh, in the Ukraine has hurt Europe a lot more <laughs> than the United States. And, and maybe that's why uh, the euro and, and the pound and even the Japanese yen have recovered so much of late. Sometimes markets can sniff uh, those things out. That's how it goes. And before we, we go look at black swans, just want to say a key event today will also be the U.S. non-farm payroll. That's out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, the feeling here is that uh, the number, if the number is a little weaker than expected, that should be good for the markets. But it's if it's too weak, uh, it might not be good for the market because it could be pointing to a recession. And I would say if it's a very strong number, it, it could also be bad for the market because it means that the Fed might remain uh, quite hawkish for longer than the market seems to be uh, discounting for now. So uh, just wanted to thank my affiliates. Uh, Precious Metals uh, dealers in North America, I ITM Trading. Uh, there's uh, details below in the description of how to get a hold of uh, Lynette Zhang's team if you want a free consultation. If you have never bought Precious Metals, they'll help you. And also, Miles Franklin, Andy Shackman and his team. Uh, the details below in the description. For the UK, my uh, affiliate is Gold Investments and... Uh, Promo code there is Maneco64, and you find everything, of course, uh, in the description. So, yeah, um, private equity. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, it's done really well in the last 30 years, private equity. And uh, private equity is like uh, usually for very wealthy investors, and they invest in private company companies, non-listed companies, and uh, usually their performance is very good. And uh, Blackstone is one of the uh, darlings of, of this group. You also have the Carlyle Group, which was created by the, the Bush cabal, <laughs> I would say. Uh, even John Major became a, a, a partner there because of uh, uh, he helped out during the uh, first Iraq war. So they're very connected people, and the returns are very good. They have a lot of firepower, but the problem is uh, that the liquidity and uh, when liquidity dries up, it gets very tricky. And uh, we, we've seen la lately <laughs> or even since 2020 that even liquidity for U.S. tragedies, which are supposed to be the most marketable and liquid market on earth, has dried up. So you can imagine that with private equity, it, it, it could get uh, pretty bad. Um, and the Blackstone Group, I mean, they're a huge group. I think they, they've even gone public. Uh, I think that there is, a, you can buy the stock, which is <laughs> kind of ironic because they buy private companies and they've gone public. But they've got like 880 billion assets uh, under management. And uh, the founder uh, was uh, is Stephen Schwartzman and Peter Peterson. So, what's going on with Blackstone? Well, as you can see here, it's top story everywhere. Uh, in the last few hours, uh, it's come out on 
uh, the FT, Blackstone, limits withdrawals at $125 billion property fund as investors rush to exit Reuters, Blackstone's $69 billion REIT curbs redemptions and blow to property empire. Uh, Bloomberg, Blackstone, $69 billion real estate fund hits redemption limit. And we saw a few years ago, there was a real estate fund here in the UK as well that went bust because it, it's very uh, apart from private equity being illiquid, real estate is not very liquid because if you buy a, a building and the investors want out, well, you have to sell the building or you have to borrow the money to to pay those investors. So it's very tricky. And I think uh, <laughs> Blackstone and the other private equities, in my opinion, they they are a reflection of the easy money we've had since uh, the early 80s and also especially the m mid to late 90s and that's why they've done so well and now with the tide receding the tide of liquidity and easy money i, I think they could be in trouble so uh i, I think this could be uh, the uh the first first sign of trouble for not just blackstone but other private equity groups so I think we need to keep an eye on this. It seems innocuous, this uh, this headline. And it's interesting that a lot of the redemptions have come out of Asia, Asian investors. So what I'm going to do, I, I'm going to put a link to this story below in the description under archive.ph so you can read the whole thing. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But I, I just uh, wanted to let you know about that because... There's a lot of things happening out there, not just geopolitically, but economically. And uh, am I saying this is it? No, but it, it could be. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. Yes, uh, gold and silver did very well yesterday, especially late in the day. Uh, silver caught up with gold and uh, even outperformed gold, I think. And uh, we're seeing the dollar weaken quite a bit, the dollar index. I, I think the key level there is going to be 103.80 because that was a, an old high from uh, January 2017. And if, if we break through there, uh, the dollar it could be in trouble relative to the other currencies. And I noticed that uh, gold didn't do too well, for example, in terms of uh, the British pound. But as I've said many times in the past, these fiat currencies, they take turn to weaken. But eventually, I think uh, they will all weaken versus gold. But anyway, uh, let's see where we are this morning. The technical picture looks good. Um, am I getting excited? No, uh, I just keep doing what I've been doing, trying to stack, not get ex excited when uh, the paper price falls, not get too excited when everything's doing well like it did yesterday and the miners did well. We just got to keep our focus on the fundamentals and the fact that uh, no fiat currency uh, in the history of the world has ever survived. And the fiat dollar is no different. Yes, it's survived a bit longer, but it's going to bite the dust one day in terms of purchasing power, at least. Uh, so... It's quarter past 8 a.m. Uh, gold is actually trading right around 1800. So it's down $3. The high has been uh, 1805 and the low has been 1795. I've noticed that some people look at the uh, February futures, which is the front month. That's trading a lot higher, mainly because there's a, 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 the cost of storage and interest rates are relatively high. So the future becomes... Um, the price uh, is a lot more than the spot, but uh, I think the spot price is the one to look at anyway. Uh, so yeah, we're down a little bit here. Uh, we moved up quite a bit yesterday, so markets do pause sometimes. Well, they have to. Uh, we got spot silver down about three cents at 22.70. The the high's been 22.93, the low 22.55. To the stock market, the Dow's down 50, NASDAQ uh, futures down 30, S&P is down 6. 
To the currencies, uh, sterling is up slightly, 122.60. The euro is unchanged, 105.23. Uh, the dollar is down another half a percent versus the yen. Uh, I mean, look at this chart. Uh, it, it looks like uh, the, the top has been put in for the dollar. We're at 134.64. Uh, I think we got up to almost 150 uh, recently. And versus the yuan, the dollar is down slightly at 703.50. Let's check the uh, dollar ruble. Uh, 70, uh, well, sorry, not 70, uh, dollar ruble is at 62, dollar is up slightly, up about 1%. Uh, we'll go, quickly go through the other currencies. Uh, we got the Aussie dollar at 68.15, that's unchanged. Canadian dollar, uh, the dollar, sorry, is up slightly versus the Canadian, 134.45. And the Kiwi dollar uh, doing quite well, up half a percent, uh, just below 64 General commodities, WTI crude is down half a percent at 8080. Uh, Brent is uh, down a quarter at 8660. High grade copper is down slightly at 381. And US snack gas is down 2.2 percent at 658. Let's check the Dutch snack gas futures. Uh, that's down four and a half percent. It's trading at 133. Probably uh this uh, russian news biden uh putin news could be helping uh energy prices come off a little bit it's understandable and yesterday uh we saw a big move down in yields the 10-year yield moved down about 20 basis points uh right now uh we're unchanged at 352 uh the two-year uh is now at 425 so yeah the bond market is kind of uh discounting some kind of uh fed pivot quite a bit of a pivot i would say but there's still a lot of uh traps out there i would say we've got the number today jobs number if that comes out strong and some of the components like hourly earnings average hourly earnings are are strong uh, we could see a, a reversal in, in the treasury market and a reversal even in gold and silver to some extent and also in the stock market so we need to keep an eye on that so there you go uh if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit the like button please share it far and wide and think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet so with that i'm going to wish you all a great weekend take care bye